Ladies and gentlemen, I am very excited and pleased this morning to introduce to you our commencement speaker. Heralded as one of the most prolific theater makers in America, David E. Talbert has written and produced 14 national tours, surpassed box office records, and captured the hearts of audiences around the world. Mr. Talbert has garnered 24 NAACP nominations and won Best Playwright of the Year for his work, The Fabric of a Man, and he has won the NAACP Trailblazer Award for his contributions and accomplishments in theater. He has also received the New York Literary Award for Best Playwright of the Year for his musical, Love in the Nick of Time. Mr. Talbert made his feature film directorial debut in 2008 with the Sonny Pictures comedy First Sunday, starring Ice Cube, Cat Williams, and Tracy Morgan. This successful venue was followed by the very, very popular romantic comedy called Baggage Claim, and in 2016, Mr. Talbot wrote and directed the holiday film Almost Christmas for Universal Pictures with an all-star cast. And I actually visited that set in Atlanta while he was filming this particular film, Almost Christmas. And that all-star cast included Danny Glover, Gabrielle Union, and Academy Award winner and fellow Morgan State alum, Monique. The film became the highest grossing and most critically acclaimed theatrical release of Mr. Talbot's career up to that point. And all of these films debuted as the number one comedy in America. But most recently, David Talbot celebrated the pinnacle of an already fruitful cinematic career with Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Netflix, that was Netflix's first original live action musical, which Mr. Talbert wrote, he directed, and he produced. This 20-year passion project of his bore a completely original and inclusive cinematic holiday experience for every family and was a significant hit among critics and audiences alike. It debuted in over 190 countries, has been translated into 32 languages, and has been nominated for 10 NAACP Image Awards and shortlisted by the Academy for Oscar Contention. Ladies and gentlemen, all this and much, much, much more that you can read about Mr. Talbert is coming from a Morganite. David Talbert earned his bachelor's degree here in 1989 in marketing from our national treasure, and he went on to attend New York University's accelerated film program. He is a very visible alumnus, and he served as the homecoming marshal here for our sesquicentennial celebration. And he is also a guest lecturer here on campus uh, in our screenwriting and animation program. I, I could go on and on, but ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming back home Morgan's very own David E. Talbert. Oh, man, what's up? What's up? Man, it's good to be uh, back here. Thank you to the good people of Morgan State University, to Dr. Wilson, my man, the Honorable Kwaizi Mfume, David Burton, HBCU alum watching around the world online, to the mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunties, uncles, anybody that helped you get to where you are, shout out to you and give yourselves a round of applause, because you didn't make it here on your own. And finally, 
to the Morgan State University graduates class of 2022. Turn up, turn up. I tell you, you might be the strongest, most resilient graduating class ever. You made it through the pandemic, an insurrection, the political unrest, social unrest, a war. You made it through black Kanye, Kanye and Kim, Kanye and Trump, Kanye without Kim, Kanye without Trump. You've seen the worst of the worst and the best of the best, and you made it. Give yourselves a round of applause. And a, and a million years ago, so did I. I'm a older man, not as old as Dr. Wilson, because I moisturize. I love Dr. Wilson. A million years ago, so did I. The funny thing, I wasn't even supposed to be here. You, did you know that, Dr. Wilson? I went to um, my senior year, we won the state at Central High in PG County, uh, PG County. And they recruited me to Division III All-White Western Maryland College. 23 black people there, all of us were on the football or basketball team. I was killing the game, averaging 21 points a game. I was, I was killing them, killing them. My uncle came up to see me, my brother came up to see me, my uncle, that, that day I hit like 30 points. And I said, Uncle Ronnie, I'm killing the game. He said, yeah, around white kids. <laughs> my uncle was a track coach at Howard and he knew the athletic director here at Morgan State, so he got me a tryout. I worked all summer long and worked on my game, came up in here, got a tryout, and I got the scholarship right here, Dr. Wilson. Scholarship to play. That's how I got to Morgan State University. I rolled up on the yard. I went from being the fastest, tallest, meanest, blackest dude at Western Maryland to the slowest, softest, weakest, whitest dude here at Morgan State University. I was like, hey guys, uh, we're gonna play? Uh, go Bears. All of the swag had been drained out of me that one year at Western Maryland. Two weeks before the semester started, I was playing basketball with some old heads and end up, don't play basketball with old heads when you got your future ahead of you. Cause they gonna make sure you end up right where they are on the basketball court doing nothing. They blew out my ankle. I fractured my ankle and showed up to Morgan State on crutches. Showed up to Morgan State University on crutches when I was supposed to play basketball. I lost my scholarship because I couldn't play. I, got, I lost my scholarship before I even got on the court. I was like Craig from Friday. I got fired on my day off. But it didn't matter because I was at Morgan State University the national treasure, the hollowed halls of higher education, of technology, of spadeology, of bridgeology, I was here. It was like the Disneyland of black people, the happiest, most melanin-filled place on earth. When you wish upon a star, beautiful black people are wherever you are. Oh, it was amazing. I limped into the cafeteria one day and it was Chicago house music over here. It was New York hip hop there. It was DC go-go over there. And in the middle of it all, it was this beautiful, beautiful woman. I sat there all alone by myself on the crutches and she was, oh my God, she was fine. She was the Delta. She was fine, not as fine as my wife, of course. Commencement is one day. I got to live with this woman for the rest of my life. Give it up for the finest woman. 24 years waking up to that beauty, that vision of voluptuous beauty over there, Lynn Talbert. Now back to this fine woman here in the cafeteria. Oh, this woman was fine. Every time I looked at her, it was like I, was, I got diabetes, it would seem like I was getting. What would you do for a Klondike bar? She was that fine. I was sitting there and a girl came up to me and she said, uh, my friend, my friend uh, likes you. 
And I'm sitting there all by myself. I didn't know anybody at Morgan. I said, who are you talking to? What, 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 what friend? And I, she turned her head and looked over there and pointed to Hershey Bar. And she said, she likes you. She said, she, she likes your lips. She says, they're big and soft and juicy and nice to kiss. Now, growing up all my life, I had been teased for having big lips. They were called soup coolers and inner, inner tube lips and every kind of lip joke. But she liked my lips. And I looked over there, and she was just smiling. And you know what I did that day, y'all? I licked them. I don't know why. It was just a nervous reaction. But I started licking my lips. And the more I licked them, the more she smiled. And well, LL Cool Dave was born that day. All my life I had been told they were a liability and that day they became my greatest asset. I took them lips out of the garage, I took them on a test drive, and they ain't been back since. My wife thanks that young lady, wherever she is, for helping me discover this. That was a Delta. I ended up becoming the president of the Delta Sweethearts after that. She was dating a Q so it didn't work out, but So, on the fabled grounds of Morgan State, I got all my swagger back that day. And my voice even dropped a few octaves. I threw off the crutches and I was healed. That's what, that's what a beautiful woman will make you. That'll, she'll heal you. She'll heal you. I took that voice I got on WEAA 88.9 FM. I was there, I did a talk show with Kwaizi. He had a show there and I had a show. And then I graduated 1989 with a degree in marketing. A degree in marketing. I graduated, I hopped in my raggedy hoopty, and I drove out to Northern California to the Bay Area where I became a DJ. 1077 KSOL, the Bay Area's best variety of music, always at least 20 in a row, continuous music station is Big Daddy. Yes, I called myself Big Daddy. The radio station sent me on a promotion to a play. I sat there watching that play. I looked at the audience. I looked at the stage. And I said, I can do that. Morgan had uh, mind messed me up into believing I could be anything and I could do anything. So I went home that night and I wrote my first play. That play opened up a year later in Berkeley, California, telling it like it is, a 300-seat theater. We ended up going across the country for the next 20 years. I was a playwright. What was important is that I had the courage to not only introduce myself, but to reintroduce myself. And that's what you all may have to do yourself. And that requires courage, not only to reintroduce yourself to others, but reintroduce yourself to the toughest critic of all, yourself. Some of you are sitting out there with degrees that you have no intention on ever using in your life. I know you're waiting to tell your parents. I just told them for you. You're going to change careers. They're going to change careers three or four times, mom and dad, but that's all right. They're going to find their way, and they're going to be all right. Do what you love. Follow your passion. Follow your heart. Everything you learn here at Morgan State will prepare you for everything you do for the rest of your life. Trust me, because it did me. I was looming large in theater. Then someone took me to a, a screening of the independent film. I looked at the stage. The screen, I looked at the people and I said, what? Well, I can do that. I said I was going to be a filmmaker. I went and wrote a, a film about two bumbling fools who were going to rob a church. That, play was, that movie was First Sunday. Ice Cube, Cat Williams, Tracy Morgan opened up as the number one comedy in America. That's Morgan State University made. That's how we get down. A few years later, Baggage Claim opened up as the number one comedy in America. A few years later, Almost Christmas opened up as what? You damn right. And then we did the mic drop of it all. We moved our family. My wife produced a film. We moved all the way out to London for eight months and shot Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey and it changed everything. My first play opened up in 300-seat theater in Berkeley, California. 
My fifth film debuted in 190 countries, translated into 32 different languages. The national treasure made me international, Dr. Wilson. That's Morgan State University made. That's how we get down. We pop our collar on the national stage as well as the international stage. The courage to create. The courage to introduce yourself and reintroduce yourself. That is the courage that I'm imploring and expecting all of you all to summon. In every generation, there is an elite group born. They're called creators. They spin universes of artistic realities into beings from nothing. Creators stare into the empty space and see things that others don't see, that they can't see, that they are afraid to see. They bring music out of the silence. They colors out of the darkness, shapes out of the shapeless. They populate our lives with the beauty and contrast that make this life worth living. Class of 2022, you are the creators. We are not here to accept reality. We are here to beautifully reject it. We are those who see reality through that lens and say, your reality ain't good enough for me. We are at beautiful war with this reality, conquering worlds by creating new ones. We are innovators, we are educators, we are emancipators. And whether society attempts to eat us alive or shower us with the praise that makes them feel more alive, it is our creations, it is our courage that will allow their human experience to feel more human. That courage is our courage, but to have courage, you have to first have fear. Did you hear me? To have courage, you must first have fear. What are you afraid of? We're all afraid. I was sitting there with you a long time ago, and I was afraid. Fear of finding a job. Fear of paying back student loans. Fear of moving back home at your mama's house who want to act like you got a curfew now. You've been living in college for four years, and she wants that baby, go out and have a good time with your friends, but make sure you're back home by mid midnight. The hell you talking? You cussing at your mama now. Fear. But fear is your friend. The best kind of friend because it challenges you to be that much better today than you were yesterday to try that much harder this time than you did last time. And when it presents itself to you as it will, you stare it in the face and do not blink. You stare fear in the face and do not blink. 30 years I've been writing. And every time I open up my computer, I'm going to tell you a little secret. I'm scared out of my mind. But I push past that fear. And I write. And I keep it going. And that's the same thing you will do. Dr. Wilson, I'm here to talk to these amazing students, but if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to somebody who you don't even know is out there in that audience with you today. I'd like to talk to my 22-year-old self, if you don't mind, because he needed to hear some things. He needed to hear some things. David, I'm going to put him right over here. David, it's going to be rough sometimes, but you're going to make it. You're going to change career a few times. Folks are going to think you've lost your mind. They're going to say things about you. They're going to doubt you. They're going to say no, but you never accept a no from somebody who doesn't have the power to say yes. You are going to make it. One of your girlfriends is going to talk you into getting a relaxer in your hair, and she's going to forget to tell you not to keep it in there too long. And well, you're going to lose all your hair. The follicles won't cooperate with you. But that's all right. You're going to make it. You're going to move to Vegas and build you the ultimate bachelor pad, David. Oh, it's going to be a palace. And before you can break it in, you're going to meet a long-legged, green-eyed girl from Las Vegas. And you're going to marry her. And though you didn't grow up with your father, she's going to make you a father. But unlike him, you're going to summon the courage to stay in his life. You're going to stay in his life, and you're going to raise him. 
and you're going to let him know how important he is, and you're going to teach him about manhood. You're going to find that courage. And he's going to be here with you 30 years or so later right there watching his daddy right there talk. He's going to be there. David, I want you to know that the only thing bigger than your lips are your dreams. The only thing bigger than your dreams are the mountains that you'll have to climb to chase them. But the only thing bigger than that mountain is God. God, who says, see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. That means the blessings will be so bountiful you won't even have room enough to receive them. Class of 2022, are you ready to receive? Four years of pushing and scraping, you could have given up, but you didn't. It's time to receive. Classmates came and went, fell off, but you kept going. It's time to receive. And those in the stands watching you and are online here, they're here to witness, they're here to celebrate, they're here to push you on, and even those that may not be here with you. Grandparents may not be here with you. Some parents have started, may not be here to see you, but don't worry. The reason why those blessings are going to keep flowing because they're up in heaven. Grandma's up in heaven. She got a hand on that window. And she's keeping it open. She's keeping them blessings flowing, like my great-grandmother. Just when sometimes you're not going to do everything that you should do, you're not going to say everything you should say, you're not going to go the right path sometimes, you're going to make a right turn when you should have go left, but grandmama's up there, she got a hand on that window. Come on, Jesus, one more blessing. The windows of heaven are opening up and pouring you out of blessings you won't have room enough to receive. I thank God for being here. I thank God for going to Morgan State University. I thank God for everything that everybody that has poured into me. I thank God for my best friends that were here with me, Bootsy, Maurice Wilkinson. I thank God for April Ryan who went here. We were both classmates. I thank God for everything that happened here. This university has changed a lot Thanks to Dr. Wilson and all the beautiful dreams and the ideas and thoughts. I was walking the yard yesterday and a little robotic machine went past me, scared the hell out of me. What in the world, the name of artificial intelligence was this? They had that machine going to a dormitory to deliver some food. What the hell is going on here at Morgan State University? We had to walk to the cafeteria. We had to get us a hot plate. There was top ramen. You got Chick-fil-A and everything. Y'all don't know how blessed y'all are. This university is amazing. The buildings are here. The people are here. And HBCUs, we are not here because we cannot get into another u university. We are here because we understand what this university has to offer. We understand that there is power and cultural Excellence, we understand that we build up one another. HBCU pride is not because we can't get anywhere, it's else because we choose to be here. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful that these windows of heaven have opened up on you. I'm thankful that they've opened up on me. And thank you for having me. Class of 2022, it's time to receive. God bless you. David. On behalf of the class of spring 2022, we thank you so much for delivering such an inspiring and uplifting commencement address. And we truly appreciate your taking time from what I know is a very demanding schedule to be with us today. And Morgan State University will forever be grateful to you. 
please join me in celebrating once again David E. Talbert, proud Morgan State University alum, class of 1989. It is now time to confer honorary degrees, and I call upon the chair of our board, Chair Mfume. Mr. President, the Board of Regents of Morgan State University hereby authorizes you to confer upon Mr. David E. Talbert an honorary degree in recognition of his notable and noteworthy achievements. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Morgan State University, I confer upon you, David E. Talbert, the degree Doctor of Fine Arts with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. David E. Talbert. Great honor. I want to just thank the <laughs> folks when I was here who helped me. Uh, Floyd Talaferro, I stayed in his office I don't know how many times I lived there. Dr. McDade Bay, Kwaizi Mfume, uh, Lamont Germany, Dr. William Benjamin, uh, Vivian Ryan, uh, all the professors, Dr. Uh, Richardson. And uh, I thank God for the prayers, the prayers of my family, my great-grandmother, my uncle. Prayers of the righteous availeth much. Prayer changes things. And uh, make sure you stay close to your grandmothers, you all, because in prayers of the grandmama, they're, they're like kryptonite to the devil. Grandmama prayers is like kryptonite. Make sure you stay close to her. But I thank God for this university. I thank God for those prayers because they continue to maintain and sustain me. I shall uh, wear this uh, doctorate, uh, this, this new uh, 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 way that I have been uh, referred to as a doctor. My wife, when I told her that she will be referring to me as Dr. Talbert from this point on, she responded as every loving black woman would respond, tell your mama to call you doctor because I ain't calling you doctor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 